All the parts are supplied on sheets like this. The first job is to remove them from the sheets safely. Please don't be tempted to press them out. The pips that hold them in will flake off on the underside of the part and make a mess. They need to cut through all the pips carefully. Two ways of doing that. Once with a knife. But possibly an easier way is with a small pair of clippers like this. And there's the part removed. Next you need to remove the remains of the pips. A sharp knife is the easiest way to get rid of the bulk of it. You can also do it with a sanding block. Whichever way you prefer. Once the pips are removed, you just need to clean up any fluffy edges like this from the machining process. A sanding block like this is ideal, a foam block, so it just conforms to the shape of the wood. And then we have a part. We start construction with a keel. It's made of three parts, central section, left thickener, right thickener. We place the left thickener on the center section, line it up roughly, take one of these pegs, locate it in the hole, set the next peg, locate it in the other hole, These are a close fit so we can get accurate registration. Make sure it's all flat. Using a flat surface to build it on so we can get a straight keel, it's very important. The shoot a pole thing, just make sure that we don't stick ourselves down to the surface. Take thin sino, hold the thickener down, make sure you're not twisting it that way, just holding it flat. Run thin sino along. Pillar reaction will take it in. Press it now firmly. Don't forget the pegs. Move along to the next section. Again, press it down firmly and hold for a few seconds. The next section. firmly again. And the bow. Don't forget the peg. Second thickener, line it up in the same way, fit the pegs, just as before.
little to the top to run into those edges. step is to fit the prop shaft. First of all we need to clean it with some abrasive such as uh, scotch brite or something similar. I've already cleaned the whole thing. Now we need to remove this little temporary piece that was just holding the keel together before we glued it together. Best tool for that is a razor saw. Can do it with a knife but easier with a razor saw. section juts out that's to register one of the bulkheads don't saw that piece off now we need to fit the tube should slide in easily this is a seven inch prop shaft it should stop about a millimeter beyond the end of the keel notice this piece here will be cut away later the moment it's holding the bottom of the keel until we've glass fibred across it. Don't be tempted to cut it away at this point. Let's make sure it projects about a millimetre there. Now we're going to temporarily glue this in place. Make sure it's aligned so the prop shaft is jutting out on both sides approximately equally. and tack it in place for sign -out. The next job is to glass fibre the prop shaft in. Now, a lot of kits simply have a metal bracket across here to support the bottom of the keel. It doesn't work very well. Breaks along here, can even leak inside. Um, much much better to put a little bit of glass fibre over the top on either side and very easy to do. Take a piece of glass cloth, trim up approximately the right shape, most important to use sharp scissors, you won't cut this thing with blunt scissors. that will just bridge the prop shaft but not going too far there's no point in going any further and you need two for one for each side now the best thing to use for this is a two-part epoxy and this is a particular good one zap make sure it's a 30 minute epoxy if you use anything quicker than that you just make life very hard for yourself always best to warm epoxy so I've put these in some hot water for a couple of minutes just to make them flow easier. You want it to flow because you need it to soak into glass cloth easily. Don't be tempted to use an epoxy that's more like a paste. It won't wet the glass very easily and make life very hard. Mix it in a simple medicine cup. 
these are mixed equal proportions There's no need to measure these very accurately most important though is always put the cap back on the same bottle otherwise they will glue themselves together Lollipop stick by far the best thing to mix them with very important to mix it thoroughly otherwise you'll end up sticky also best to make sure you mix more than you need not less because if you have to mix some more later on it just makes life very hard even though it's called 30 minute epoxy it will start to thicken much quicker than 30 minutes and so if you try and mix another batch later you'll have a job blending the two together now apply it fairly liberally around the prop shaft it down and make sure that the resin soaks through it. The glass starts off white when it's soaked it goes to the same colour as the glue that tells you you've got it soaked. If there's any white left you're not finished. It's important to get into the corner there because otherwise you'll get an air bubble going down there and it won't be very strong. Don't worry if it overhangs the end, it can easily be trimmed off afterwards. But do make sure you don't get a build of resin along that edge because you want to keep that free because that's where the lower skin fits, fits like that, you see. Okay. Not if you can see, but there's no white there. Off that bit. There's no white there and it's pressed into the corners. So it'll be strong. To the other side, exactly the same. The other good thing about using an epoxy is it doesn't smell particularly bad. If you use a polyester resin, which is commonly used with glass fiber, it stinks. You'll also have a heck of a job mixing an epoxy, mixing a polyester resin in such small quantities because you need to use about one or two percent of hardener um, imagine trying to me measure one or two percent of that quantity there so much easier with a, an epoxy that you mix 50 50. make sure you haven't disturbed the other side at the same time make sure it's all wetted and you haven't built a lot of glue up in that corner there and that's that, we'll leave that to set. Now that the epoxy is set hard, it's nice and smooth, it's not sticky at all. If it was, it'd mean that you hadn't got the ratio right or hadn't mixed it thoroughly enough. Next thing to do is remove this piece here, which was just supporting parts of the keel until we assembled it. center section because this will form a register for the lower skin so you're just removing this part quite 
Now I just need to trim this up a little bit. A knife or a file, whichever works easiest. glass fine but they just overhang in the edge. Just tidy it up. And there we go. Let's see I've left this centre section. Well now we can start assembling the bulkheads. This is bulkhead one. Simply slots in place. Make sure you engage it fully in the bottom, pressing it down as you lift forward. Then comes the breast hook. It's marked port and starboard. It does matter which rope it is because there's a piece machined out here to help align the skins. It fits in, locks the first bulkhead in place. We then take the second bulkhead fits into the keel assembly, presses down and engages in the press hook. It's vital that you get this section pressed together very tightly when you glue it because this sets the square for everything afterwards. So hold it down tightly. against the keel. together in all directions.
as a first section.